Number 10. Gwenpool Gwenpool is truly one of the most unstoppable mutants. In fact, she is so unstoppable that she actually was able to make herself a mutant by willing that origin into existence for herself. I know, it's wild. Gwenpool, for those who are unfamiliar, is an alternate version of Gwen Stacy and Deadpool combined, who hails from an alternate reality not yet given an official number. The temporary reality number assigned to it currently by fans is 565. Gwenpool becomes a mutant after Kamala Khan, the current Miss Marvel, refuses to fight her when Gwen tries to instigate a battle, and instead tries to reason with Gwen. Kamala is the one who suggests that Gwenpool's understanding of the fourth wall and her belief that she is simply a character existing in a comic book could be a story that Gwen created as a result of not wanting to acknowledge the truth. The fact that she is actually a reality warping mutant. Possibly. The idea broke Gwen somewhat and caused her to retcon her own origins, instead becoming a reality warping mutant as Kamala had suggested and finding a home on Krakoa with all the other mutants of Earth 616. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd and if you love it when we talk about mutants, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 9. Rogue Rogue is a mutant who truly is considered to be one of the most durable around. She can just take in a power set through absorbing someone's powers, permanently adopting it. In fact, some may not know, but that is actually how Rogue is able to fly and where she gets her strength and her durability from. She actually stole those powers from Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, aka formerly Miss Marvel, which is how she was known at the time. For a long time, Rogue was unable to properly control her powers, causing her to accidentally steal people's memories, powers, and even psyches just from touching them, and causing Rogue to often be much removed from her other fellow mutants, friends, and loved ones, afraid she might hurt them accidentally after she became a hero, and resulting in her basically wearing fully covering outfits, except for her face of course. However, it was this very fear that apparently prevented Rogue from controlling her abilities, and once she faced it, she gained better control over her powers, making her virtually unstoppable. Which is also probably why a lot of writers keep her on the sidelines, or prefer to. She's kinda hard to write because she is so unstoppable now. Number 8. Magneto Pretty much nothing stops Magneto, not even losing his heart. Now, if you've seen our unstoppable superheroes list, then you know what I'm talking about. So for this point, I'm going to talk about another insane feat of Magneto's, other than when he defeated Uranus while completely heartless with some help from Storm. Not only can Magneto sustain his own flow of blood without a heart, using his powers, but he could also seriously mess you up by manipulating your blood in your body. Or even worse, mess you up by just pulling out all of the iron from your blood. We've seen him do that too, and it was pretty horrifying, I gotta say. Magneto has also used his mastery of magnetism to perform the kind of blood witchcraft you'd associate more with a magic user. A warlock if we were talking D&D &D classes, I suppose. Magneto has used this ability to manipulate the blood of his victims to also control their minds, turning them into mindless zombies who will do his bidding as a result of manipulating the flow of blood to their brains. Who needs telepathy when you have magnetic mutant powers, I guess? Number 7. Apocalypse I mean, there is a whole reality based around the idea of what what if Apocalypse was unable to be stopped? This reality is known as Earth 295, aka the Age of Apocalypse. And in this world, Apocalypse becomes pretty much inevitable thanks to the early demise of one man, Charles Xavier, aka Professor X. AOA just goes to show you what a force Apocalypse is, and if you aren't convinced by an alternate reality where Apocalypse rules the world, you can also turn to a more recent X-Men event, Ten of Swords, aka the Otherworld Tournament. During this this fight, Apocalypse faced his wife, who was possessed and, even against the seemingly unbeatable foe that was Annihilation, Apocalypse still managed to win, saving his wife and freeing her from the influence of the Golden Helm, while also basically saving all of Krakoa, mutant kind, and Otherworld. Possibly the world itself, outside of Otherworld. Number 6. Jean Grey You know how it goes, we have to talk about the most powerful original X-Men member if we're talking about Unstoppable Mutants. I just gotta do it. Jean Grey is a force to be reckoned with, and not just because she was the host for the Phoenix Force either. Even without the insane power of the Phoenix Force bonded to her, Jean has done some pretty impossible things, including almost single-handedly defeating Null during the Absolute Carnage event. And okay, yeah, so she didn't, she didn't really single-handedly defeat Null one-on-one, -on -one. but honestly, 
she probably could have if she really wanted to. She was, at the very least, integral to uncovering the god of symbiotes weakness. Jean has been an unstoppable force many times over, and even while serving on the X-Men team recently, used her powers to single-handedly defeat Nightmare, who has managed to terrorize even Doctor Strange before, and she used her power to defeat Cordyceps Jones and his entire casino, simply by trapping him in an illusion while the X-Men basically did their thing. From within that illusion, Jean says it best when it comes to just how powerful she truly is in issue number 11 of the recent X-Men series. I was Marvel Girl, now I am Jean Grey. I did not even let the Phoenix command me, so what chance do you have? Ooh, fair. I would never try to command Jean Grey. I would only let Jean Grey command me. Number five, Hope Summers. Hope is pretty understandably unstoppable. I mean, she combined with the powers of Wanda was even powerful enough to defeat the Phoenix Force, which is known for being extremely stubborn, resilient, and of course, pretty much invincible and indestructible. Now granted, the Phoenix Force did not remain defeated forever. It was not permanently destroyed, but that wasn't really as a result of Scarlet Witch and our Hope being ineffective. That was more to do with the cyclical nature of comics where, well, Rarely anyone or anything remains dead, banished, or defeated. Hope is unstoppable because her mutant power allows her to adopt any other mutant powers. So really the only way to defeat her would be to put her in an isolation chamber and good luck getting her there, considering that she currently lives on an island where she is constantly surrounded by all kinds of mutants from all different alignments and where some of the most powerful mutants known to us reside. And then there's also the fact that, I mean, technically Hope kind of worked with Wanda's powers and now Wanda isn't a mutant, so what does that even mean? Does that mean Hope can just take any powers? I'm, I'm still not sure about that. Number four, Miranda. Miranda doesn't have a fancy code name. She's just Miranda. While not necessarily canon in the main continuity, Miranda is still one of the most unstoppable mutants I could think of, so I'm including her here, despite the fact that I believe she does exist outside 616. Although with her power set, that is something that seems like it could easily and quickly change if Miranda willed it to be so. Miranda is from the story X-Men Worst X-Man Ever, a limited series covering only one arc by Max Bemis and Michael Walsh. We are introduced to Miranda through Bailey Hoskins, who is the self-proclaimed worst X-Man ever. Bailey's powers allow him to self-detonate, in essence a human bomb, but that is all he can do, which means that it's kind of a one-use power, therefore lame and not really useful at all, because you know, if you use it, you'll be dead. Bailey also isn't particularly skilled, athletic, or smart. On the contrary, his friend Miranda can warp reality, shaping it as she sees fit. If Bailey is the worst, Miranda is kind of the best. While Miranda does use her powers, Bailey doesn't even seem to notice at one point, calling her out years later for not doing enough, when, oddly enough, the whole time, Miranda has been unknowingly saving the whole world and possibly the universe multiple times over, which she reveals and is like, I was here the whole time like saving everyone, but you know, I just changed reality so no one really notices. <laughs> Number three, Squirrel Girl. I mean, isn't unstoppable just a synonym when you think about it for unbeatable? For some reason, when it comes to mutant lists, I always tend to forget that Squirrel Girl herself is a mutant. I don't know why I forget about Doreen, because I love her so much. And this also happens to me despite the fact that when we're first introduced to her in the comics, she advertises herself to Iron Man as a mutant. I guess it's because Squirrel Girl, despite being a mutant, is not often associated with the X-Men, but instead prefers to align herself more with the Avengers, or the Great Lakes Avengers anyways, and other Avenger-based teams. Number two, Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister might strike you as an odd pick for one of our top spots on this list. List, but with what he has been up to lately, I gotta say, I think he deserves it. As we ramp up to the Sins of Sinister event, which I'm sure is going to be a banger, but also end up destroying the beautiful golden era that has been X-Men comics recently, and Krakoa. Poor Krakoa. Sinister is quickly becoming the most powerful he has ever been. Currently, this is all thanks to his Moira protocols, as revealed in Immortal X-Men. With the Moira protocols, Mr. Sinister can control the timeline, basically tweaking it as he sees fit to better understand the best way for him to shape the world as he would like it to be. If he makes a change that doesn't actually work out for him in the end, he just destroys that powered Moira clone that he has to erase that change and outcome and then kind of like tries again. So this allows him with all the Moira clones that are powered to try, well, infinite possibilities for what the world could be, which is pretty scary. This is an insane level of power and could possibly make him one of the most unstoppable mutants ever, unless a whole bunch of mutants and heroes are able to do something about this. Though, 
he might not be the most unstoppable. Number one, Iska the Unbeaten. Iska is truly unbeatable. Even the closest I have ever seen to her being beaten, she wasn't really beaten at all. She still won, but in winning, she also kinda lost. Does that make sense? Let me explain. The Fisher King on planet Araco, formerly known as Mars, following the events of AXE and the invasion of the eternal Uranus, who destroyed much of the planet and many of its mutant population, ended up challenging Iska to a battle of understanding. The Fisher King did this as a way of getting back at Iska the traitor, who had turned on her own people in the past and then did so again when Uranus first attacked the planet, turning on her fellow seats on the Great Ring of Araco. This is not something Iska chose to do, but something she was forced to do as a result of her power, because she can never lose. And so to beat her in his own way, knowing that he wouldn't win, the Fisher King challenged her to a battle of understanding, where the winner is the one who most truly understands the meaning of loss. Ho ho ho! As you can imagine, Iska won, but in so doing, she felt great grief over all that she had lost and chose to leave Araco and resign her seat on the Great Ring. This is the closest I've ever seen to Iska losing something. And still, she technically won because she understood grief the best between the two, or understood the idea of loss, I should say. Iska is such a fascinating character, so while she is gone for now from Araco, I do hope we continue to see her appear in the Books. I mean, who knows? Maybe she'll be the key to defeating Sinister? I don't know. Number 10, Moira McTaggart. Moira McTaggart, when she was a mutant, was pretty unstoppable. I mean, she almost single handedly destroyed all mutants from behind the scenes, which I think is pretty wild. And she also posed as someone working to save all mutant kind on various occasions, which I think also made her unstoppable in a different kind of way. Moira McTaggart, of course, is no longer a mutant in the comics as she was depowered, but her mutation was reincarnation. With the knowledge of prior lives lived, carry that forward into her next life. In fact, Moira's power was so great that it was proven to be connected to the very fabric of time and reality, with the whole universe seemingly resetting after each of her deaths. This also means that even after being depowered, Sinister was able to create and use clones of Moira with their mutant gene activated to predict the outcome of various events and shape reality in his own image. In essence, Sinister can now use Moira, or more specifically Moira clones, to attempt various tactics in order to get things as he would like them. Now, when a tactic fails, he simply destroys that Moira clone, thereby erasing that tactic, its outcome, and the resulting timeline slash reality. And friends, before I move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, and if you love it when I talk about mutants, I know I love it, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 9, Franklin Richards. Franklin Richards might not have his powers currently in the comics, but that doesn't stop him from being one of the most powerful mutants to have ever existed, and definitely the most unstoppable at least across time. Besides, I'm pretty sure Franklin will have his powers and his mutant status back eventually. Like Gwenpool, Franklin was also revealed to have willed himself into becoming a mutant, although he did so subconsciously, which is even more nuts. Franklin's powers were of the reality warping variant, and apparently without knowing it, he used them to make himself appear as a mutant. However, as his powers waned, it was made clear that he was not truly one, but simply appearing as one thanks to these powers. And apparently this was confirmed when we noticed that, yeah, Franklin, uh, oh wait, no, you're not actually a mutant, you're just a depowered mutate, so whoops. This is why he ended up getting rejected from Krakoa, although Professor X did not appear to Franklin personally, but simply in his astral form. Number 8, Darwin. Darwin is one of the mutants who was brought on the mission to infiltrate the Children of the Vault's home base, known of course simply as the Vault. Darwin was handpicked for this mission due to his unique mutation, which allows him to adapt to any situation, evolving himself to best survive whatever he comes up against. For this reason, he's pretty unstoppable. This is also why the Children of the Vault valued him and ended up capturing him, because his mutation was also valued amongst them and makes them a lot more unstoppable as they can implement it into their own evolution to help them evolve smarter and faster, making them even more formidable foes for the X-Men. Number 7, Sunspot. Sunspot is a mutant that I feel I do not talk about enough on this channel, so I'm using this list to grow his ego just a little bit more. Sunspot is unstoppable in many ways. He's not only powerful as a mutant, even willing to give his life to save the day, refusing to be stopped by whatever problem comes his way, but he's also insanely ruthless when it comes to the world of business. He is wealthy and so often can break through barriers that some mutants might be limited by due to their income bracket. 
Besides that, Roberto is probably also one of the most stubborn characters, not even just mutants, that we have in comics, and for that reason, he is also personally pretty unstoppable, as he doesn't usually give up or throw in the towel easily. And if you want to talk about power levels, woo! Sunspot has been referred to before as one of the most powerful mutants ever. Now granted, I think he was the one who called himself that, but Bobby's ego aside, I do actually myself believe him to be one of the most powerful. Number 6, Destiny. I love this suggestion from Jamie Doughty, who commented on our last video saying, I think Destiny will be the ultimate stop to Sinister. She's got something planned, as always. And I imagine a smirk at the end of this comment, as always, smirk. Because well, you are so right Jamie, Destiny does always have something up her sleeve. This is just because she is so good at seeing the future. There is very little Destiny seemingly can't see when it comes to all the multiple possibilities of the world. And I do agree that Destiny will likely play a key role in the demise later on of Sinister. Straight out of the gate, she threw many wrenches into his various attempts to enact his plan. If it weren't for Destiny, Sinister would have succeeded potentially a lot more easily. And sooner. Also, people never think of mutants with precognitive abilities as being unstoppable because, well, they're usually pretty squishy, but you don't have to worry as much about being squishy when one, your wife is one of the most deadly mutants, Mystique, and two, you can pretty much just like sidestep almost any and all dangers headed your way by seeing their potential before they have even arrived. Number 5, Emma Frost. Emma Frost is one of the best telepathic minds we have in the comics. She has proven herself to be even more powerful than some of the most iconic telepathic mutants, such as Professor Z. Xavier himself, at one point laying traps in Cyclops' mind with which to ensnare Xavier should he attempt to enter Scott's mind, which of course he did. Emma also has proven how deadly she is when she manipulated the mutants into going to war during the Inhumans vs X-Men event. Not her finest moment to be sure as a hero. Speaking of her being a villain, she also successfully stole Storm's body for a time in a body swap, managing to briefly infiltrate the X-Men, and even when Emma isn't using her own powers and mastering them, she's proving how powerful she is while using some Someone else's. Like when she swapped bodies with Iceman and was able to use his powers to turn into water and travel through currents. So not only is Emma a powerful telepath, teacher, and businesswoman in her own right, but she can also be quite good at mastering mutant skills and power sets which don't even belong to her. Which is probably what also makes her a really good teacher. Number 4, Mad Jim Jaspers. He is a weird mutant that actually started out as a villain who was anti mutant himself. Mad Jim Jaspers was, in essence, someone who was seen as pro human and anti mutant until people realized he himself was a mutant with reality warping powers. He ended up being quite the foe as well, and despite having died multiple times, has returned time and time again. Most recently, he returned in Otherworld, first spotted there during the Otherworld tournament, showcased in the Ten of Swords event. Jim literally just popped up there as the person in charge of the crooked market in Otherworld, a sort of black market in the fantasy world where a person can literally find and acquire anything they could possibly think of, no matter how rare, elusive, or seemingly forbidden. The even stranger thing is, last we saw him before this, I believe Jaspers was once again dead, and his random appearance was not explained here, so we still don't really know how he came back to life and got to Otherworld. I suppose we can chalk that up to just how unstoppable Mad Jim and his power set are. Number 3. Sink. Sink has recently become one of the most OP mutants to many X-Men fans. He was resurrected on Krakoa earlier as he was needed for a mission to infiltrate the vault, where the children of the vault had retreated to. The team was three mutants who are known for their unstoppable level of resilience, especially combined. It included Laura Kinney, formerly known as X-23, currently known as Wolverine, Darwin, and Sink. Of the three, only Sink seemingly survived and escaped once they had the intel that they needed. Although later, we learned that Laura also managed to survive. So now we kind of have two Lauras in the comics, old Laura and younger Laura, as she was initially believed dead and therefore resurrected. Sink was able to get valuable information back to Krakoa before dying himself and being resurrected once more in a younger body. You see, in the vault, time moves differently, so he and the team had actually lived there for hundreds of years, despite the fact that a much shorter period of time had passed outside of the vault on Earth. Upon being resurrected, Sink's powers seemed to mutate further, allowing him to retain the powers of a mutant that he'd synced with previously. 
easily, as opposed to only being able to use their powers while nearby and synced with them. Although using this power to its fullest extent does seem to be hard on Sync's body, so there is that. Number two, Iceman. I think Iceman has proven time and time again that he can't be stopped. The story I recanted earlier, where Emma was able to use Bobby's power while in his body to travel through water as water, that is also something Bobby himself can now do, as was evident when he fought recently against Fin Fang Foom in the first run of the Marauder series. His fellow mutants and teammates had thought that Bobby had been destroyed when in reality he hadn't. It looked like Fin Fang Foom obliterated him, but Bobby, being Bobby, he just turned to water, went into the ocean, and came back up again, proving that he is a force to be reckoned with. Even hell can't stop Bobby. He'll just freeze it over again, as he's also done in the past before. And to be honest, it would probably be even easier for him this time around, as he's continued to grow in power since then. You know you're unstoppable when you're able to do things like freeze hell over. Number one, Storm. Storm is not just a mutant with unbelievably unstoppable powers, she is also a literal goddess. What does that mean? Well, it means that Storm can be even more unstoppable just from the power of belief. At one point, Storm ends up literally being confirmed as a goddess after people believed for her to be one for years. We are shown that when people believe in Storm, this gives her even more power, which is wild because base level power Aurora Monroe is already off the charts. Storm is a fearless leader who does not even fear death himself, even going so far as to dance with a version of death, Apocalypse's son, and one of his original four horsemen. And she beats death in combat too, which is pretty wild. Of course, you know, this isn't mistress death, but it simply goes to show how fearless Storm is, whether we're talking literal death, metaphysical death, or an alternate representation of death. Number 10, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler does not get enough love on our channel. I know at times I can be the one ragging on him, but at the end of the day, I really do love Kurt Wagner. I think he is a fascinating character and one of the most complex individuals that we actually have on the X-Men team. Even though his teleportation powers are not as impressive as some other mutant teleporters that we have, such as Magic or Manifold, Nightcrawler is still a character whose determination and faith tend to be his driving force, helping him to do the unimaginable at times. And there is no length to which he wouldn't go to help out his teammates, his friends, and his family, the X-Men. In fact, at one point, Nightcrawler even left heaven after his death and returned to life just to help them out. That's that's pretty wild. Can't stop that. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, why not let us know that you love us by clicking that subscribe button. Do it! And if you already did it, thank you. You're great. Number 9, Moira McTaggart. You wouldn't have likely thought of Moira McTaggart as an unstoppable mutant. Probably though because you wouldn't have even thought of her as being a mutant. But here we are, and here she is. She is a mutant. During the Krakoan era of the X-Men comics, it was revealed to us right near the beginning, during the Dawn of X period, that Moira this entire time was actually a mutant. What? And what's even more insane is she might have one of the most interesting and powerful abilities out there. Her power allows her to resurrect after her death, but not by coming back to life, but simply by living her life all over again, thereby resetting the continuity, manipulating the very fabric of reality and how we perceive it. Moira has lived multiple lives, always remembering the ones that came before. This gave her knowledge which allowed her to manipulate the course of history. Number 8, Wolverine. One of the most skilled and effective trackers we have over at Marvel Comics, and I would say probably one of my most favorite characters. If you try to run from him, there is likely nowhere safe for you to hide, at least not on planet Earth. And even possibly not in the cosmos either. Has Wolverine ever gone to track someone across the stars? Because that is a story I would love to read. Oh wait, there was something similar to that in the X-Men Infinity comic, where Wolverine was tracking lost mutants through space. There's the little online ones that you can get on Marvel Unlimited that you scroll through, by the way, that are kind of like webtoons. Wolverine is not a man who often gives up, even when he wants to. And based on how tragic his life has been, there have been many moments where Wolverine has wanted to call it quits. But even then, he keeps on going. Not even his own will to give up can stop him from soldiering on. Number 7, Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister isn't just one man, he can literally be an army of clones. What is more unstoppable than that? Well, not much. Especially when you consider just how brilliant and deadly he and each of his clones can be, with their immense knowledge of mutant DNA and twisted approach to evolution. Mr. Sinister isn't just one of my favorite mutants because of his fabulous look, although that definitely only makes me love him more, to be honest. It's because he's always up to something, always scheming and planning and hiding in the shadows. And when Sinister schemes, it can be dangerous, like to the point that he can take over the whole world by manipulating and tailoring the timeline to his liking. That kind of dangerous. See Sins of Sinister for more on what I'm talking about there. 
Number 6, Exodus. We don't talk about Exodus enough. As you know, I'm a big fan of psionic powers outside of I would say super speed and teleportation. I think this might actually be like my favorite power set and definitely is one of the power sets I consider to be the most powerful. Why do I love it so? Why do I consider it to be so powerful? Because it allows you to defeat someone without ever having to really lift a finger in the physical world anyways. Exodus might not be as well known as some of the others on this list, but trust me when I say he is one of the most powerful telepaths and telekinetics out there. We have seen him prove himself in psionic battles against ancient and eternal creatures that were in essence kind of like dragons. In fact, I believe he even literally fought a dragon as well at one point. Exodus not only has his mutant powers, which were at an insane level already when they first manifested, but he also had them enhanced by Apocalypse, making him even more powerful. In fact, he is considered to be one of the most powerful mutants in existence. If that doesn't make him unstoppable, I do not know what would. Number 5, Cassandra Nova. I mean, Cassandra Nova is seriously just crazy. I love her and I also kind of love to hate her. I mean, that's that's the beauty of Cassandra Nova. Technically, she is not quite a mutant. Instead, she is a mumma dry, which is basically like an evil twin that you have to defeat to be born, at least according to the Shi'ar. In Cassandra's case, she is the evil twin of Charles Xavier, whose powers first manifested in the womb before he was born, so that he might stop Cassandra, who attacked him at that time. As a result, Cassandra was defeated and Charles lived on. Being born into the world. However, even then, this wouldn't be the end for Cassandra. She actually survived as basically a collection of cells that look like goo and she managed to once again manifest, returning even stronger than she was before. And yeah, like I said, she's a mumma dry, but she's also like a mumma dry of Charles, so that kind of makes her a mutant and right now, or at least recently, last time I was reading Marauders, she was fighting for the mutants because she kind of allied herself. She kind of saw herself as one. So I mean, yeah, it kind of depends on the story. Story, but I think we can consider her immune. Number 4, Jean Grey. Jean Grey was once the Phoenix Force, but even without the Phoenix Force, she is a powerhouse. In fact, at one point, Jean even stated the Phoenix Force was, get this, actually holding her back. What? Even without her connection to the Phoenix, even when she is not a host, Jean has proven herself as one of the most unstoppable mutants out there. She has gone toe to toe with gods and not only survived, but also won. Jean Grey is also one of the most unstoppable in the sense that she doesn't even really need to mess you up to win a fight with you. And I think that is a really impressive strength. Or rather, I guess I, I should say, she really only needs to mess you up mentally maybe, but then, even then, not in a way that leaves you like catatonic or anything like that. She isn't savior, she won't necessarily just like wipe your mind or anything like that. She doesn't need to. Instead, she'll give you an entirely new perspective that will make you change your own mind. Number 3, Magneto. While Magneto was stopped a while ago with him seemingly being killed during the long and epic fight that he had against Uranus, Magneto still wasn't even really stopped there. Now, allow me to explain. I know that's a contradiction. Minus everything that may or may not be going with him potentially returning from the dead in Scarlet Witch's comic, unless that's Joseph, his younger clone, and it could be. I'm not up to date on Scarlet Witch, so if there's some things that have come up in the last couple issues, shh, don't spoil it for me in the comments. Magneto actually never died in his first battle with Uranus, despite literally having his heart removed. Magneto willed his blood to keep like pumping through his body, using the iron in his blood to help control and move it through him. With his mutant powers going into overdrive to act as a temporary replacement for his heart during the AXC or the Axe event, when he was essentially trapped on planet Rocco, aka Mars, as he also fought to defend it. And even during his rematch with Uranus, he really only went out because he chose to go. Sounds pretty unstoppable to me, I'm just saying. Number 2, Storm. Storm is one of the best, more badass characters that we have around. She is unstoppable on, honestly, a lot of different fronts. Not just because of her mutant powers to control the weather and manipulate the atmosphere around her, sometimes even the world over. Not just because of her insane fighting skills and physical prowess, and not even just because Storm is a goddess. And honestly, not even just because Storm is also an amazing leader, she's also that too. A lot of the time for me, it's Storm's spirit and her determination that just makes her the most unstoppable. She does not give up, even when it seems like defeat is basically inevitable. Storm makes her own path and does not let others define her, and that is both what I admire the most about her and what I think makes her often such a force to be reckoned with. Willful, strong, and undefeatable. Storm knows who she is and she isn't afraid to show it, and I, I love that about her. That's, that's being unstoppable right there, knowing who you are and being like, this is who I am, that's it. Take it or leave it, but you gotta take it because I'm unstoppable. 
Number 1. Apocalypse Apocalypse is definitely one of the most unstoppable mutants around. He is one of, if not the most deadly mutant that we have, I would say. There is a whole alternate reality where Apocalypse has successfully conquered the world, and there have been a few times where he's also come close to doing that in the main continuity. That's why I personally was both so amazed and so surprised, kind of scared, when I saw Apocalypse join the mutant nation of Krakoa. Initially my thoughts were, uh oh, when is, when is he going to betray them, because that's going to happen. But over time I came to understand that Apocalypse being so unstoppable didn't always have to be a bad thing, as he is also allied literally with all the mutants. He could actually be a force for good in that way, because if there's anything that Apocalypse does believe in, he believes in mutants, and so it kind of worked really perfectly that he'd work with them. Ultimately though, Apocalypse wants mutants to be at their best and to be on top. So as soon as there is a disparity between what he wants for mutant kind and what the people and other leaders of Krakoa want, he's probably going to go back to being unstoppable in a more villain. In this way. Number 10, Emma Frost. She's probably the biggest name on this list. It almost feels like everyone knows her powers, but someone suggested her in the comments, and well, she's awesome. Emma Frost possesses telepathic abilities on a similar level to Charles Xavier. She's been referred to as an Omega class telepath and has demonstrated the ability to stalemate Exodus and overcome telepaths such as Nate Gray and Rachel Summers through greater experience and skill. With her telepathy, Emma Frost can create psionic shields, telepathic cloaking, telepathic illusions, she can absorb information and upload information into others. Emma can project one's astral form from their body onto the astral planes or the physical planes. She can inhibit others' powers, induce pain, erase a person's memories, and heal mental trauma through psychic surgery. She has intuitive multilingualism, mind control, can create mental links, induce mental paralysis and sedation. She can alter others' minds, cause a kind of mental amnesia. She can telepathically detect and track others. Not to mentioned produce psionic blasts and psionic lightning. And that's not mentioning her secondary mutation of a diamond form. This grants her super durability, strength and stamina as well as psychic immunity, but at the cost of her psychic powers. Number 9. Black Tom Cassidy Black Tom Cassidy is the cousin of Sean Cassidy, who is Banshee, and he was originally a longtime crime partner to the villain Juggernaut, but his powers are interesting to say the least. Originally, his mutant power was bio or organic thermokinetic blasts, generating concussive blasts of force through any wooden medium. Normally it was a, forgive my pronunciation, a shillalag, which is a traditional Irish wooden fighting stick. Tell me if I messed it up in the comments, please. After a fight with Cable, doctors grafted a wood-like substance onto his wounds, healing him and allowing him to channel his bio blast directly through his fists. But as a result of a genetic virus, the substance spread over Tom's whole body, turning him into a Groot like looking dude, which actually worked to his benefit as the secondary mutation gave him plant growth allowing him to grow to immense size, superhuman strength, a healing factor, chlorokinesis which is control over plant life within his vicinity. He could distribute his consciousness among plants he controlled and Cassidy could drain the life force of organic beings. He eventually returned to a human form but kept the capacity to control plants to a limited degree, mainly focusing his powers on wood specifically and using the energy channeling aspect of his powers he could increase his striking power to generate protective shielding. Number 8 Sebastian Shaw Sebastian Shaw is a mutant that you'll probably best recognize for being the Black King of the Hellfire Club, or the guy who somehow took out Darwin in the X-Men First Class movie. I still think that was dumb. His powers are actually a bit different from that movie though. Shaw has the ability to absorb energy, specifically all forms of kinetic energy directed at him and use it to enhance his strength, speed and stamina. This includes physical damage such as that sustained in battle and kinetic blasts such as Cyclops optic blast or Gamma's explosions. That's why you'll sometimes see him punching walls, being hit by his own underlings, or allowing himself to be hit by his foes in order to build up more and more of the kinetic energy to empower himself. He can also absorb and use other forms of energy such as electricity and magical energy as shown in Avengers Academy when fighting Hercules. He can build up and store this energy and release it whenever he chooses. His biggest power, however, comes in the form of being such a powerful and influential figure in the Hellfire Club. Number 7. Jason Wingard Jason Wingard, otherwise known as Mastermind, is basically an illusionist. 
but a very, very powerful one. He can psionically manipulate the senses of other people, causing them to see, hear, touch, smell, and or taste things which do not actually exist, or see, hear, touch, smell, and or taste real things in ways that they would not do naturally. So, for example, he can seem to make a solid wall appear in an empty space, or he can make himself look and sound like a different person, or look and feel like a wall or even seem invisible. Since his power only affects the mind, his illusions cannot be recorded with cameras or anything like that, but his power is so strong that even if his victims know they are being subjected to an illusion, they will still react to the illusion as if it were reality, unless they can rid themselves of also suspicion that it is indeed reality, which sounds a little confusing. Basically, if Mastermind creates the illusion of a wall, most people, even if they know it's an illusion, will still be unable to walk through that wall. His most famous usage of his power, in my opinion, is when he attempted to manipulate Jean Grey, which led to that whole Dark Phoenix thing. Good job, dude. Number six, Sunspot. Roberto da Costa is another mutant that a lot of people have heard of, especially in the more recent stories that have been coming out of Marvel. But that doesn't mean everyone knows his powers. Bobby da Costa's mutant ability allows him to store solar energy in his cells through a similar method to the way we store energy when we eat food. He can then release it when necessary to enhance his physical strength, usually with the side effect of his body being cloaked in darkness because he drains all the ambient light from his skin, which sounds really cool. The enhancements to his strength through this radiation have allowed him to knock down an alternate universe Hulk, even drawing blood and even restraining Gladiator of the Shi'ar. But other than his physical enhancements, he has also used the energy he absorbs to fly faster than light speed, use pyro and thermokinesis, firing blasts of heat and dark solar plasma, as well as using photokinesis directing light. He's also incredibly tricksy, displayed when he recently manipulated Iska the Unbeaten. I just love this character. Number five, Trevor Fitzroy. Trevor here, who goes just by Fitzroy, is actually from Earth 1191. There, he was the illegitimate son of Anthony Shaw, the Black King of the Hellfire Club. Trevor's mutant ability was to drain other living beings of their life force, converting it into energy and absorbing it into himself, usually disintegrating his victims. With this life force, he can do a few different things, like opening temporal wormholes to travel across time and space, teleportation, shifting objects into different time frames, altering the flow of time to return people or objects to a previous incarnation, and freezing people in a type of stasis. The thing is, the usage of his power depends on the life force he absorbs. So for example, one wormhole would be equivalent to one person's life force. It's a little scary to be honest. He did get a big power boost in the Bishop The Last X-Men series, where he tries to become time itself. He is a super cool and super super dangerous character. Definitely check him out. Number four, Harold Leland. Harold Leland was an alcoholic and obese corporate lawyer and also a mutant with the abilities to increase the mass or gravity of a person or object within his line of sight. He can use this ability to increase mass all at once or over time, slowly increasing the more a victim struggles. The power has shown to even break the ground beneath a target depending on the strength of that ground. So for example, there was a time that he sent Wolverine from in inside the Hellfire Club all the way through the floor and the ground into the sewers. Also, the human targets would suffer great strain in their muscles, particularly in the heart, with the possibility of suffering physical damage. And if Leland uses his power on an item, that item could crumble if it wasn't particularly durable. Leland joined the Hellfire Club, an elite social club for the rich and wealthy located in New York's Fifth Avenue, under Sebastian Shaw. He isn't the most impressive fighter, but his ability has come in handy more than a few times. Number three. Three, Emma Steed. Emma Steed is actually the Black Queen of the London Hellfire Club. If you are noticing a lot of Hellfire Club members here, that's because there are a lot with very cool powers and not a lot of people know much about them at all. For example, Emma Steed here has a rare form of telepathic power called psionic skinning. This basically allows Emma to create blades of pure psionic energy to attack and disable her foes. These blades aren't purely for physical attack. They actually allow her to do a number of things like 
warping the minds of people, igniting pain sensors, destroying physical portions of their brain, and destroying psionic forms or astral projections. Using this ability, she was able to de-life the Shadow King, who is a incredibly powerful telepath. As a secondary result of her powers, she is basically immune to any type of psionic or telepathic attack, with her presence being absolutely destructive to telepaths. Number two, Cora of the Burning Heart. Can we just get an applause for literally the coolest name ever? Like, Cora of the Burning Heart. That's awesome. Cora of the Burning Heart is a mutant from Morocco where she served as an assassin and primarily used her power only to boost her own abilities in battle, thanks to the Iraqi being really stubborn, honor bound fighters. But Cora's abilities can indeed help others as well. Cora's heart is an internalized combustion furnace, which generates life force energy. Thanks to that energy, she gets this really awesome looking flaming skeletal appearance, and she uses this constant energy source to give herself incredible incredible physical capabilities, as well as boost up the powers of others around her to even greater heights. She was a member of the X-Terminators alongside Cable, and she is also a part of S.W.O.R.D. Also, Cora of the Burning Heart. Sorry, just wanted to say it again. Super cool. Number one, Amelia Vought. Amelia was a mutant born with the ability to transubstantiate solid matter into vapor that she can control. And honestly, it's such a great ability. Seeing the things she can do with this ability is really cool. I said she can transubstantiate matter, and that is including herself and other people. When she turns herself into vapor, she is obviously unharmed by physical attacks, but can then fly through the air as vapor and pass through small holes or cracks. But the vapor is still physically there, which means she can still move objects as vapor. She has also turned her allies into vapor to get them out of dangerous situations, substantiating them beside her. And she's even stolen weapons off of enemies, turning them into vapor, which she then reformed in her own hands. But wait, there's more. Using the astral plane, Amelia is able to transport herself and anything else across the surface of the globe in an instant, even summoning distant people to herself by teleportation, converting them into mist and then bringing that mist into her presence to be reformed. It's just super cool. Coming in right at number 10 is Richter. Julio Richter has a pretty interesting mutant power. Richter can manipulate various aspects of the planet itself. Originally his powers manifested in simple seismic energy, allowing him to create earthquakes, shock waves, and rudimentary transport of earth matter. However, after Richter's powers evolved, he now has the ability to remotely terraform the ground around him in a much more precise manner. He can toss rocks around with precision or will the ground to open up like a tunnel. But he also has some skill with plants, controlling vines and other plants to ensnare his opponents. Julio also gained magma kinesis after being trapped under an active volcano and just rising out of it, riding on top of the magma like an absolute bad. More impressive than that though is that Richter's powers have created a psychic slash empathic bond between himself and the primal life force of Earth's biosphere, allowing him some clairvoyance and mysticism. Definitely one of the coolest characters I have never heard of. I just wanted to pause here to say if you're enjoying this list so far, dropping a like is all you have to do to help us out and let us know that this is what you want to see. And on that note, we're gonna get to number nine, who is Gorgeous George. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and when I behold George Blair, Gorgeous is not the word that comes to mind, but nonetheless, that is the name he holds. Gorgeous George's body is composed of this tar or putty-like stuff that, through his thoughts, can be expanded, morphed, and reshaped in any way he wants. Using this ability, he has been able to turn his entire body into a puddle or make himself extremely slippery to avoid capture. Side note, becoming extra slippery just makes me like, Ick, you know, I don't, I don't like that slipperiness. George is also very hard to injure. He can reconstitute parts of his body and can even bend to dodge attacks. The slippery thing also kind of helps with this as well. He has also once tried to choke Strong Guy by using his powers to enter his lungs, which is just a terrifying thought. On a lighter note though, his arms are actually longer than normal because he forgot their 
normal length after getting drunk with other members of Mr. Sinister's Nasty Boys. Well, that's kind of cool. Number eight, Thumbelina. Are you getting tired of seeing all these super powered beings who look like they just walked off a runway? Well, lucky for you, there is Christina Anderson who goes by the moniker of Thumbelina. She's short, she's stout, she's slow, and she's always being made fun of. But she has a pretty useful mutant ability. Thumbelina can shrink down to a quarter of an inch, making her an excellent candidate for missions of espionage with the Mutant Liberation Front. The best part about Thumbelina's powers though is that she retains her full size strength in her miniature size and has even been shown to actually increase in strength as she shrinks. So make fun of her all you want, but Thumbelina has proved instrumental to the Mutant Liberation Front team, even being the reason their first mission was such a success. Number seven is Strong Guy. I kinda can't believe I haven't talked about Guido Carousella yet. Despite this guy's massive hulking appearance, he is one of the most entertaining mutants around. Essentially, Guido, who goes by the name Strong Guy, has the ability to absorb kinetic energy and use it to enhance his physical strength. Now at a base level, he can lift around 50 tons, which is already more than a lot of superpowered beings. But using his kinetic absorption, he can boost that strength up to far above 100 tons, making him one of the strongest characters in Marvel Comics. Unfortunately, Guido's body suffers from his mutation. Storing the kinetic energy he absorbs for more than 90 seconds will permanently distort his body in very painful ways. The distortions he's already suffering from cause him to be in constant pain, which, being the great guy he is, pushed him towards being absolutely hilarious to hide his pain. Hey y'all, if you love the manga, if you love the anime, well then make sure to check out Most Amazing Top 10 Anime. James is an awesome host bringing you videos just like this one, but with that manga and anime setting. You should definitely check it out. And coming off of that, number six is Layla Miller. Of all the mutant powers I've come across, resurrection is one that doesn't actually happen too often. But Layla's resurrection ability is an interesting one. It comes with a major side note. Layla has the ability to resurrect dead beings, restoring their bodies and their consciousness, but not their soul. Without their soul, the resurrected being will have no conscience or morality. We saw this happen both with Strong Guy and Trevor Fitzroy, who were resurrected by Layla, who eventually experienced drastic changes in their personality without their souls. Another key factor about this resurrection is that it can only be performed within minutes of the individual's death. Layla claims she can also reverse this process, taking back the life that she gives. Another interesting note for Layla is that during the House of M, Layla Layla was resistant to Wanda's reality warping abilities and retained all of her memories. She could even give others back their memories. She's also been to the future and studied magic with Doctor Doom, so like, that's cool as well. Coming in at number five is M. Just the letter M. Monet St. Croix has an interesting past, and honestly, her family is a big part of that. Her brother is an incredibly powerful bad dude who trapped her in a different form where she is known as Penance. As Penance, she has diamond skin, a telepathic resistance, and super sharp claws. M can even combine with her younger siblings Claudette and Nicole, but on her own, Monet is essentially a near perfect being. All of her physical and mental skills are greater than the natural physical limits of peak humans, granting her super strength, speed, agility, stamina, senses, intuition, and a genius level intellect, as well as reflexes that even allow her to catch bullets. She can fly at supersonic speeds by sheer force of will, she can read minds, project her thoughts into the minds of others, and defensively mask her mind against telepathic intrusion. And she has even displayed some telekinesis. And on top of all that, she has the power of being ridiculously good looking. Lucky. Number four, Marius St. Croix. I could talk about Monet St. Croix for a long time, but her brother, he is just terrifying and needs to be discussed. Marius, who eventually goes by the name M-Plate, has the ability to siphon mutant energy by feeding on the bone marrow of mutants using his super creepy feeder mouse that appear on the palms of his hands. M-Plate needs the energy from mutants in order to survive, almost like a mutant vampire. And like a vampire, if Marius siphons all of a person's energy, his victims will pass away. Also like a vampire, if M-Plate drains only part of a victim's energy, he can gain a kind of psychic control over their mind and can cause the mutant to become an energy vampire just like him, but under his control. 
kind of like a vampire's familiar. Interestingly, when feeding from a victim, he actually cancels out their powers and copies them for himself. After multiple feedings, he even gains their power permanently, like he did with Penance's diamond skin. In at number three is Chamber. Chamber, or Jonathan Evans Starsmore, discovered his powers when a blast of psionic energy burst from his torso, destroying much of his chest and his face. It turns out that Chamber is actually literally composed of that same psionic Ionic energy and his body just acts as a shell for it. When his powers burst out of him, the wound was replaced by a constant glow of psionic fire, leaving him unable to speak. Instead, he can only communicate telepathically. Additionally, he does not eat, drink, or even breathe as he has no organs. Chamber constantly created and unleashed psionic charges of energy that could strike with a volatile force, being projected as a blast from his chest, a series of guided streams that struck specific targets, or as a massive eruption striking in all directions. Now, If he was given the time to train properly, Chamber could have potentially been one of the most powerful mutants to walk the earth, but unfortunately he's not. Number 2. Mikhail Rasputin As the older brother of both Colossus and Magic, Mikhail Rasputin Putin has quite the mutant genealogy, and he ain't no chump himself. Mikhail is an alpha level mutant with the ability to manipulate subatomic matter and warp energy. His power hasn't really been properly defined, but he could forcibly fuse a man to a tree and could manipulate Bobby Drake, Iceman's body. Speaking of Iceman, Mikhail also seemed to display some form of enhanced perception, being able to see Bobby's potential just by looking at him, and he could show him how to use his powers in better ways. Mikhail has also used his power to fire energy blasts, tamper with people's powers, and most prominently for teleportation. He could transport himself as well as others by opening up dimensional portals by ripping away at the subatomic wall of space, which he did when the Soviets sent him into space and blew up his ship. Sorry. And coming in at number one is Sienna Blaze. Sienna Blaze has incredibly strong destructive abilities, thanks to the fact that Sienna can disrupt a planet's electromagnetic energy spectrum, absorbing the energy into her body and then releasing it, usually in destructive blasts. Sienna's released energy would tear a hole in the local electromagnetic field, which is bad, in case you wondered. With with repeated use of her power theoretically being able to destroy the planet. She can also use the magnetic energy to fly at 150 miles per hour or impressively to teleport herself along the planet's electromagnetic field. Again, every time she teleports, she permanently damages the electromagnetic field at the point of departure, causing a pretty strong explosion. As an example, Sienna shot down the X-Men's Blackbird in Antarctica. Sienna then ambushed Cyclops and Storm and nearly completely took them out until Professor X prevented her from using her powers. Then Storm, Cyclops, and Professor X managed to defeat Sienna, except she just teleported away and left a massive explosion in her stead. Moving on to number 10 with Mero. Of all the mutant powers out there, I think the one I would actively try to avoid having, if that was how it works, is the abilities of of Mero. Now, Mero's actual mutant ability is a hyper accelerated metabolism, and it's through this that she's able to do what most people know her for accelerated bone growth. She has the ability to control the growth, shape, and toughness of her bone structure, even having it protrude from her body and be used as weapons that she can remove. She can also use this ability to create a sort of armor. Now, the only problem, and the reason I wouldn't want it, is that it hurts when she does it. And just imagine how much that would hurt having your bones protrude from your body no thank you, I'll, I'll pass. Luckily, she has a very rapid healing factor that also gives her enhanced strength, agility, and reflexes. And as a little bonus, this girl has two hearts, which allowed her to actually survive when she had one pulled out. Nice. Number 9, Eunice the Untouchable. Now, I gotta say the force field abilities of wrestler, criminal, and villain Eunice the Untouchable definitely have some major drawbacks. The positives are great. His force field can withstand blows from the Incredible Hulk. He can project his force field to move objects. He could also use the shield to be untouchable, hence the name, opening it up to be able to grab things and eat. Now, the drawback would come in the fact that there have been multiple times where Eunice had his abilities increased, but to a point he couldn't even control his own abilities. At this time, his shield would literally close him off from everything. He couldn't grab things, eat food, or even breathe oxygen, which caused him to even pass out on one occasion, which luckily deactivated his powers, allowing him to actually live. Maybe if he used his powers for good, the writers would make him less self-destructive, but 
these are the cards you're dealt, bro. Guys, if you are indeed enjoying this video, do make sure to give it a little thumbs up. It's all you gotta do to let us know that you're enjoying what you're seeing. Thanks, nerds. Appreciate you. And at number eight is Pyro. St. John Allardyce is an Australian pyrokinetic mutant. He has the ability to control flame to grow in size and intensity and to even take on any form he desires. He has used flame to create almost solid creations he refers to as, quote, the living flame, which have been in the shape of gigantic claws, birds, or even golems. The size, power, and intensity of the fire beings Pyro created were limited only by the extent of his imagination, the degree of his concentration, and his force of will. The only problem for Pyro is that he cannot generate flames spontaneously. He needs a source, which has been flamethrowers in his costume, other allies like Lockheed, or like a, a lighter or something. He can also be burnt by any fire that wasn't under his direct control. Now, he used his abilities mainly for evil deeds and crimes, but since his resurrection on Krakoa, after he died due to the legacy virus, he has gone on to join Kate Pride's Marauders and got this crazy skull tattoo on his face. It's kind of cool, but also I wouldn't do it, but you know, whatever. Number seven, Strife. You know, a lot of the characters on these lists have come into contact with the character of Strife. And while most people do know how powerful Strife is, I think not including him on this far into this series is kind of a sin. So, Strife is actually a clone created by Mother Ascani and taken by Apocalypse, a clone of Nathan Summers, who most of you know as Cable. Strife is essentially what Cable could have been had he not been infected by the techno-organic virus that he needs to use his powers to constantly keep at bay. Without that limitation, just like Cable, Strife is an Omega-level telekinetic, at least that's what he calls himself, and it's stated that he is the third most powerful one on Earth. He's able to do almost all of the other things telepaths of his level are capable of, plus powerful defensive and offensive telekinetic powers. But he is also cybernetically enhanced to have superhuman physical attributes thanks to Apocalypse. Strife is an incredibly powerful villain, not to be taken lightly at all. And at number six is Reaper. Pantu Huragheb has some interesting abilities to say the least. When he first appeared as part of Strife's Mutant Liberation Front, Reaper had the ability to generate a paralyzing effect on others that slowed their mobility and reaction time. He would usually use his scythe as a conduit for this ability, and it could even fully paralyze victims. But later, Reaper was enhanced by the Weapon X program, who gave him cybernetic prosthetic arms that could take different shapes, although you likely won't be surprised to hear they usually took the form of scythes that would still act as a conduit for his abilities. Unfortunately, Reaper did lose his abilities on M-Day, only to regain them again and then have them drained again. So. He doesn't have any powers right now, I'm pretty sure. Or they're like diluted or something, I don't know. Number five, Dragoness. For Tamara Kurtz, she was born a mutant directly because of the nuclear fallout caused by Hiroshima that her parents were exposed to, which is a different reason than a lot of other mutants, which to me makes her more interesting. She only debuted in 1990, so she's only been around for about 30 years, but she has certainly established herself as a powerful mutant so far, displaying the ability of bioelectricity generation. Kind of like an eel. No, I'm just kidding. She's not like an eel. She usually uses this electricity in electrical blasts and pyrotechnic flares, which she used as part of Strife's Mutant Liberation Front. Since her introduction, she has also been seen as a vampire, after which she died and has since been revived, so she may or may not still be a vampire as well. I have no idea. Also, for a while she was equipped with these biotechnic pair of wings, which in the House of M were actually completely organic. I'd be stoked to see her show up again in comics and maybe expanded upon. I don't feel like there are many electricity based mutants, so it'd be kind of cool. Number four, Slab. A lot of you liked seeing Thumbelina in part seven of this list, but what about her brother? Chris Anderson was a member of Mr. Sinister's Nasty Boys, and his life before this time isn't very well known. He has abilities similar to his sister. Where she can decrease in size, Slab has been shown to increase in size, getting stronger and more durable as he does so. Later on, he joined the Mutant Liberation Front, and even more recently than that, he has been seen on the Mutant Nation of Krakoa, where he went on to join up with S.W.O.R.D. as part of their security division. Number three, Vincente. He isn't really the most impressive of characters, although his abilities are certainly interesting, even if he usually gets defeated. On Earth-616, Vincente was a member of M-Plate's Hellions team. He had the ability to change his body from solid, liquid, or gas forms. Now as a gas or liquid, he has been shown to be able to mix himself in with other materials and substances. So, for example, he once mixed himself in with some soup 
or in the Age of Apocalypse world, he became wine inside a bottle. Over time, he further developed his abilities so that in his gas form, he could now render himself poisonous if inhaled. He was defeated twice, and since the last defeat, he hasn't really appeared more. Not yet, at least. So let's cross our fingers and hope he shows up. Number two, Skids. Sally Blevins, otherwise known as Skids, has a long history in Marvel Comics, being involved with many other mutant characters and teams from Magneto and Charles Xavier to the Morlocks and X Terminators. First introduced in X Factor number seven in August 1986, Skids' mutant ability is to create frictionless force fields that protect her from pretty much all physical attacks falls, energy weapons, and projections. It can also allow her to kind of skate at a bit of speed given the frictionless nature of these force fields. She can also use her force fields to extend to others if she focuses. There was one really cool moment when she protected Avalon from breaking up upon re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere with help from Jean Grey. That was really cool. So if you ever check that out, Check it out. That made no sense. Whatever. Let's move on. Number one, Wind Dancer. Sofia Mantega was increasingly isolated at a young age, being ignored by her father, Walter Barrett, after the death of her mother and being told to not use her powers. Now, Sofia finally reached a breaking point. She entered into one of her father's grocery stores and let loose a hurricane inside of it. After she was arrested by police, Mr. Barrett was confronted by Danielle Moonstar, who saw Sofia on the news. She, um, persuaded him to enroll Sophia into the Xavier Institute. Sophia Mantiga has aerokinesis that she uses to amplify small vibrations in the air and draw far off sounds to her ears. She can also disrupt the equilibrium of others with compressed air, lift herself off the ground for flight, create sharp forces of wind that can cut through material, and she even creates isolated whirlwinds or direct blasts of high pressure air control. And she can manipulate the movement of air. But this is all before she was depowered. She has been a part of the Marauders, X Corporation, New Warriors, and New Mutant Squad. Number 10 is Spike. I talked about Mero in part eight, so it's only fair that I talk about the animated X-Men evolution character known as Spike. Spike, or Evan Daniels, was actually the nephew of Aurora Monroe, but his mutant powers are much different than hers. Similar to Mero, Evan can manipulate his bones, causing it to project through his skin to create armor and bone spikes that he can use as melee weapons, or he can even launch the spikes from his body as projectiles. Unlike Mero though, Spike's bones piercing through his skin and being broken off or fired as projectiles doesn't actually hurt him, which is a huge benefit. What's super interesting though is that after some time with the Morlocks, Spike was able to make his bone spikes so hot they were almost on fire, which actually kind of raises more questions that go unanswered than anything else. In at number nine is Avalanche. You don't often get Greek mutants, which makes Dominic Petros a pretty unique character already. Dominic came from the Greek island of Crete, which is somewhere I desperately want to travel to, so if someone can like hook me up with that, that'd be great, thanks. Like a lot of mutants though, he started out as a villain. Originally part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, then x Corps, Project Wide Awake, Freedom Force, and Villains for Hire. He's gotten around, and with the destructive capabilities of his powers, it honestly kind of makes sense. Avalanche can create super powerful vibrations waves from his hands. These waves can cause matter to shatter or crumble, and if he uses it on the earth or even large buildings, he can basically create earthquakes or, wait for it, avalanches. But Avalanche has quite the control over this ability, able to move objects, create tidal waves, cause the ground to move or shatter, or even ride waves of earth as transportation. And he even used his abilities to be a fantastic landscaper. If you guys are enjoying this content, I beg of you, slap that thumbs up button. It's the only thing you can do to prove you're loyal to me. I mean, to show your support. Number eight, The Blob. The Blob, or Frederick Dukes, is one of those characters I really didn't give enough credit to when I was growing up. He can actually do some pretty cool things, and some things that didn't even occur to me. His actual main mutant ability, for example, is that he can essentially become immovable by creating a monodirectional increase of gravity beneath him that extends out about five feet in radius from his center of balance. But what's even cooler is that with some training, Blob was able to manipulate his gravitational aura 
outwards in order to trigger a localized implosion. Also, the blob is incredibly durable. The fat on the blob is able to absorb the impact of rifle bullets, cannonballs, bazookas, and even torpedoes. He has even been able to survive being hit by a meteorite that was 50 feet in diameter moving at terminal velocity, which is insane. But that's not all. Blob is also able to manipulate his body, basically shape-shifting to a degree. After undergoing the mother vine enhancement process, Blob even developed a secondary mutation, liquid form. And here I thought he was just incredibly fat. Number seven, Caliban. If you have seen Logan, then you'll recognize Caliban as the bald, seemingly albino mutant who hangs out with Logan and Professor X. In that movie, he displays Caliban's main ability, which is being able to detect mutants' X genes, usually within about a 25 mile radius. Although, it's worth noting he has been able to detect particularly powerful mutants from further away before. But what I want to talk about is Caliban's other power that most people don't know. It's called his flight or fight response. So whenever Caliban feels stressed, he manifests two extra powers. Super strength that can overpower Spider Woman and fear absorption. This second power allowed Caliban to absorb the psionic energy created in the fear from others and amplify it back into his environment, doing things like very quickly turning those nearby into a fear-induced panicking mob. This ability was boosted by Apocalypse twice when Caliban served him as both death and pestilence. Number six, Frenzy. Joanna Cargill, like a lot of the X-Men, started off as a villain. She ran away from her home after her mutant powers activated and she caused the passing of her not so great dad in self-defense. From there, she would join Apocalypse's Alliance of Evil, where she would do battle with the X-Men. She would go on to join the Acolytes and eventually the X-Men too. Now, she works as an agent of S.W.O.R.D. on Abigail Brand's X-Men Red Team. So, with a history like that, she has got to have some cool powers. Well, Frenzy's main power is invulnerability. She possesses steel hard skin, which has only ever been penetrated by adamantium. She's She's also highly resistant to extreme hot and cold, as well as radiation, and she can withstand high impact forces like Cyclops' optic beam or a punch from She-Hulk. Speaking of She-Hulk, a byproduct of Frenzy's power is that she has super strength as well. Enough to lift around 25 to 75 tons and punch Jennifer Walters back if she wants to. Number five, Typhoid Mary. Okay, so if you know who the mutant Legion is, the one who has hundreds of different alternate personalities that all have different mutant powers, well, Mary Walker is sort of like that. Only for Mary, she has only a handful of alternate personalities and they just allow her to access the powers that just Mary can't access. Those powers include limited amounts of pyro Telekinesis, telekinesis to move small objects, grabbing her dropped weapons or even turning objects into armor, and telepathy, usually used to manipulate others or influence people to do things without thinking like kissing her or grabbing their weapons. Her Mary persona is a pretty quiet and timid person with no actual powers, but her other main persona is Typhoid, who is more adventurous, lustful, and violent. She later adopted a few other personas like Bloody Mary, who was sadistic and brutal and pretty much hated all men, kind of understandable, sort of, and Mutant Zero, who was a cold, calculated, and militaristic person. Number four, Mask. The Morlock leader, Mask, has a pretty ironic ability. He himself is not exactly the most gorgeous of beings, but his abilities allow him to alter the appearances of others through touch, molding their bodies and features like clay, or just mentally influencing the change he desires. He can alter people's hair and skin color, body structure, and several other features, including turning limbs into tentacles. Mask can also use his powers in combat by making an enemy's limbs attached to their body, like, like that, or by closing their breathing orifices to limit their combat prowess. His powers of body manipulation later evolved so that he could alter his own flesh, but the new limits of his powers were stated to be a secondary mutation by Charles Xavier. Apparently, when Mask's body was pierced by Shatterstar's sword, Mask instinctively altered his own internal organs to help him survive, and ever since, he's been able to 
modify his own body. But what he can do exactly in terms of modifying his own body hasn't really been sold yet, so we don't really know. Number three, Christine Cord. Although Christine Cord, now going by Long Strike, doesn't actually have any mutant powers anymore after M Day, she used to actually go by the name Tattoo because her mutant ability was a chameleon skin that allowed Christine to form words or patterns on her skin, which she could use to camouflage herself or convey messages. But she actually has a secondary ability in the form of biophasing. This basically meant that Christine was able to move through matter, and if she reached into another person, which is a terrifying thought, she could disrupt the neurochemistry of a person and or alter their molecular composition. Unfortunately, we won't know what else she could have possibly done because after losing her abilities and joining the new warriors, she unfortunately did not live for too much longer. And at number two is Jeb Lee. Jeb Lee is one of the final horsemen of the mutant Apocalypse. He was chosen as Famine after Apocalypse watched Jeb using his drums at Gettysburg during the Civil War. Now, using his drums made Apocalypse choose Jeb as a horseman? Yes, it did, because Jeb has an incredibly unique mutant ability, which is to transmit a bio-auditory cancer that feeds on the flesh of all who can hear it whenever he makes a tapping noise, whether that be with his drums or even just tapping his fingers on a table. Jeb has a pretty, um, dark past, as you can probably imagine. Lee was a Confederate spy during the United States Civil War, walking the battlefields dressed as a Union soldier. Now, after returning back home, his Union Army uniform was discovered and his family was burned alive, which manifested his mutant powers. He then used these powers to go back to war, marching from battle to battle and taking the life of every human in his trail. And at number one is Dakin. Dakin, or Akihiro, possesses a lot of the same abilities as his father, Wolverine. He has a crazy healing factor, superhuman senses, and of course, bone claws. But what some people may not be aware of is the one mutation he possesses that neither his father nor his sisters possess. That power would be pheromone control. Dakin has empathic ferrokinetic abilities that allow him to use his pheromones to manipulate the emotional state and sensory perceptions of others. He has used this to instill intense fear, happiness, depression, fascination, and a false sense of security in others. The false sense of security though is the definitely most interesting one as it has a allowed him to sneak up on others without them even worrying that he could be there, which is so cool. He has also used this ability to alter others' depth perception and vision, making them fight sluggishly. He can also control his own pheromones to make him basically untrackable, even to someone like Wolverine. Now there are limits to Dakin's pharokinesis, but it is such a cool ability. Number 10, Artie. Arthur Artie Maddox is an interesting one. His mutant abilities manifested when he was just 11 years old, leaving him disfigured and mute but granting him the very interesting ability of visual telepathy. This means that Artie can connect to his or others' thoughts, and he can project those thoughts as psionic holograms or pictograms. This is really useful for Artie, uh, specifically as he is a mute, but at the same time, I gotta say, I think that regular telepathy would kinda be a bit more useful, and I don't know. Doesn't matter, cause Artie's power is more cool, because he can even make large-scale holograms and use them in battle, usually for defense. But Artie can also also performs something called a mind lock that allows him to paralyze someone physically or mentally. I kind of hope he keeps evolving his powers, but we'll see. Number nine, I scream. I scream, that's I, like this, or scream, like is a villain of the X-Men who decided he needed to destroy the X-Men using their danger room. He actually got pretty far in that plan too, and he was able to overload Cerebro, taking down Professor X temporarily. Now I'm gonna assume he did that by giving the device a brain freeze, because if you hadn't guessed, ice cream can turn into any flavor of ice cream. And then everyone screams for ice cream's ice cream. No, that's not true, sorry. But using his abilities, he was able to enter the X-Men's mansion and the danger room before Xavier came back to and lowered the temperature in there, freezing ice cream's ice cream form, which is when a clown turned him into a banana split and split from the scene. Just go read Obnoxio the Clown from 1983, you'll get it. Make sure you guys check out the other videos in this series and drop a like on this video to show us your support. Number eight, Peeper. 
Peeper, or Peter Quinn, first appeared in Captain America Annual Number no. 4 in May 1977 as part of Magneto's new Brotherhood. A brotherhood of verbally based villains. Slither, Shocker, Lifter, Burner, and Peeper. Seems like a bit of lazy writing over at Marvel to me, but mm. This group actually went under a couple different names under a couple different leaders, including Mandrill and the Red Skull. Peeper, though, is definitely the most interesting of the bunch, and he's also more relevant as he he has appeared recently as part of Abigail Brand's sub team called the Six. On this team, Peeper played the role of the Eye, using his abilities to examine Kyrbon or Kerbon particles. That's because Peeper has the gift of telescopic, microscopic, and X ray vision using his enlarged eyes. But he also had an offensive ability in the form of yellow or red concussive optic blasts. He also seems like a decent dude, despite usually being a villain. Number seven, Brew. Saying that a mutant is unique kind of feels redundant, as most mutants have pretty unique abilities from others of their kind. But Brew is even more unique, as he is not a mutant of the human race. Instead, Brew is a mutant of the incredibly violent and parasitic insectoid alien race known as the Brood. This essentially means he can actually feel compassion and friendship, and he was born separately from the Brood hive mind, meaning he is not loyal to a Brood. Queen. He also possesses super genius levels of intelligence, making him one of the smartest students at Jean Grey's school for higher learning. So, Brew's X gene mutation is only really mental or psychological in nature, but being a brood, he brings natural body armor and fanged jaws to a fight. And recently, Brew actually consumed a king egg, making him king of the entire brood species, including the brood queens. Number six, Big Bertha. Bertha Crawford, originally Ashley Crawford, until she changed her name, had the mutant ability of total control over her body's physical size and mass. She can add or take away hundreds of pounds to herself at will, controlling her figure. This allowed her to become the highest paid fashion model in America at one point, but also allowed her to don the Big Bertha superhero persona. Using her abilities to add bulk and mass, she actually increases her durability and her strength to a peak of lifting 50 tons, allowing her to jump huge distances like the Hulk. No matter what size Bertha alters herself to though, she has a high level of athleticism. Ashley re branded herself into a plus size model, which is when she changed her name to Bertha. And you know what? She still kind of killed it. Good job. Number five, Decimus Furious. Decimus Furious actually began his life all the way back in ancient Rome, where his mother and father took their own lives, leaving Decimus homeless on the streets. In 281 AD, on the cusp of the afterlife due to his hunger, his mutant powers activated. This gave him super strength and durability, alongside an extremely bestial form, similar to like a minotaur, but almost as if it was made of stone. He's really super cool looking, honestly. But his his more powerful ability would be empathic war infection. This basically means that Decimus can infect anyone who he strikes with a thirst for war, which will send them into a rage filled state. It also acts as a defensive tool against telepaths who try to read or control his mind, causing the war infection to overcome the telepath. He has also been shown to be able to piece himself back together after being blown up, which is funny because he blew up when Phantom X made him feel love, which did not compute and he just went boom. He became Apocalypse's final horseman of war. Number four, War Path. James Proudstar is the younger brother of John Proudstar, also known as Thunderbird. And he always idolized his brother, but in that idolization, he actually limited his own powers to a degree. Mostly, his mutation boosts up his physical capabilities, granting him super strength that has had various different levels. Once having Hulk levels of strength, but another time struggling to fight an alligator. He can run at 100 miles per hour, and his stamina allows him to exert himself for 24 hours without rest. He can withstand a hell of a lot more than a regular human, like falling several stories or being hit with energy. Blasts. His agility and reflexes are increased to the point of dodging bullets, and his senses allow him to see in the dark and hear sounds other humans can't. After some training with Pete Wisdom, Warpath has shown the ability of self propelled flight and a regenerative healing factor. What's really interesting is that while working with Ghost Rider, James gains shamanistic abilities like perceiving spirit energy. He's also probably one of the best mutant combatants, whether it's unarmed or armed, with his vibranium daggers. Number three. 
thinking Gideon. I believe Gideon here is the first external to make this list. The externals include immortal mutants like Selene and Apocalypse, but they all share a psychic link which separates them from other immortal characters. Gideon was born during the 15th century and aboard Christopher Columbus's first expedition, he actually succumbed to scurvy and his life was changed forever when he resurrected and gained his mutant abilities. Like all externals, Gideon is immortal and no longer ages. He can also resurrect himself, as confusing as that sounds since he's immortal. But unique to him is the ability of power mimicry, giving himself the powers, advanced skills, and talents of any being, android, or even battle suit. And he's been able to gain the powers of three people at once. But more than that, his powers allow him to fully understand how to use that other person's powers to the point that he can even overcome the original user of said power. Number two, Cypher. Cypher, or Doug Ramsey, has omnilingual translation abilities. And considering that communication is an essential part of our everyday lives, whether that be with other humans, devices, or even our own selves, I'd say he's pretty powerful. He can translate language of literally any origin, even alien. He can read and decipher codes, including computer code, as well as read body language, subtext, and unspoken intention. More recently, everything he sees is interpreted as information, meaning he basically kind of just reads life. He can read body language to the extent he's able to predict people's moves before they make them. He can learn and perform spells for magic users, and he even created his own overly complex language that makes him immune to psychic mind reading. But Doug actually merged with Warlock, essentially giving Doug techno-organic shape-shifting abilities on top of everything else. And for our number one spot, we are going to talk about my number one favorite X-Men, Nightcrawler. Kurt Wagner was first introduced in Giant Size X-Men number one in April 1975, with the mutant ability to biophysically displace himself into the brimstone dimension, travel through it with a subconscious sense and then return back to our dimension in a different location, essentially teleporting. This all happens so fast it's almost instant and it always is accompanied by the signature BAMF sound. Although he can teleport really really far, even across the world more recently, he avoids teleporting to places he hasn't been before or places he can't see as he can accidentally end up appearing within solid matter which could potentially end his life. Although he does have a small amount of spatial awareness that at least keeps his feet from teleporting into the ground. and he can even use the little demon things known as BAMPs as teleportation beacons that allow for teleportation to places he hasn't been before, even across dimensions. Through his unique physiology, he gains a few extra abilities as well, like a prehensile tail, micro suction hands and feet, and flexible bone structure, but he can also camouflage himself, bending light using the brimstone dimension. But what a few might not know is that he actually became immortal thanks to the fact that Recently, he sacrificed his soul in heaven to come back to life, which is good because I never want to lose this legendary blue mutant.